before trimming our clips in the timeline, there are actually two ways of doing it. There's the old way that Premiere Pro did it, which is with the trim monitor, and there is the new timeline trim mode. I'm going to demonstrate both of them. Both of them have their uses. The one that I think most people will use from now on is going to be the dynamic timeline trimming, but the old trim monitor is still quite a good tool, particularly if you know the keyboard shortcuts. So let me firstly show you in this tutorial the trim monitor and in the next tutorial we'll do the new dynamic trimming in the timeline. So the trim monitor itself is now found only under the windows menu and second from bottom you click trim monitor. Previously it had a keyboard shortcut of T but T will now take us to timeline trimming. So the trim monitor is still there, it's worth having a look at. If I click trim monitor it opens up a floating window and this window is full of information. Let's have a little look at the information. Firstly, I've got a blue bar right across the top here. Now the blue bar is over both items, showing me that both items are selected, and it's between these two clips where this current time indicator has snapped to the nearest edit point. Okay, so as soon as I hit trim monitor, it snapped the current time indicator to the nearest trim point and has selected both clips meaning that any trimming I do at the moment will be rolling edit, moving the edit point between these two clips. And in fact, if I hover with my mouse over the middle there, you'll see that it's showing me that a rolling edit will take place. How do I rolling edit? Well, look, if we look down here, we can actually see that we could type in a number. A positive number will go one way, a negative number will go another. Or the keyboard shortcut will be Alt-Right to move one frame at a time, or Alt Shift right to go five frames at a time and again Alt Left arrow to go one frame backwards or Alt Shift left arrow to go five frames backwards. Now you'll need to double check this on the Mac because I certainly know that they're different for uh, the timeline trimming. It should be Option left and Option right for the Mac however it might be command. So just double check simply by hovering over here and you can see what the actual keyboard shortcut is from the tool tip that comes up. So if I do Alt Right at the moment, I am going to be performing a rolling edit on this clip. So if I do Alt Right Arrow, you'll see that I am beginning to roll that clip forwards. And if you actually look in the timeline, you can see I'm rolling one way. And if I now do Alt Left, you can see I'm rolling back. So I'm rolling the point between these two clips. However, you can get to just one of these two clips. So you can see if I hover over them I've got the yellow ripple trim tool and again ripple trim tool from the other direction but if I do Alt 2 you'll see that the blue line is now only over one clip. If I do Alt 3 you'll see it's over the other clip and Alt 1 is both of them together. So it's probably option 1, option 2, option 3 for the Mac but it's Alt 1 for both clips, Alt 2 for one clip and Alt 3 for the other clip. And that then brings that clip only available for trim. Now here's the other bit of information. The blue area here is showing us what is already showing and the grey area is showing us spare footage, this would be tail footage in this case, that's available um, before this clip. So I could actually trim this one quite a long way. This side is showing me that I've got a little bit of head footage that's not being used and this blue footage is what is being used. Now. At the moment, I'm on this clip here. So if I start doing Alt-Right, I'm trimming just that clip to bring it to the point where, say, the waves are just beginning to start to come over that rock. So that's just that single clip. And if I want to do the clip before, again, Alt-2 will take me to that clip. And now it's just to this clip that I'm going to be trimming. I want to make it shorter, say, I can start trimming it. And you'll see, if you look just down here, that this is actually going to be trimming backwards showing that I'm using less and less of that clip and in the timeline you can see the clips getting shorter if I want to bring more in I can go with the right arrow and if I hold the shift key and the alt key go forward five frames at a time so I'm increasing or decreasing the individual clips whilst at the same time I could choose alt 1 have both of the clips and then shift alt would move the rolling point five frames one way or another now if I get to the end at this point here you'll see that this clip is completely full I cannot go any further I'm actually clicking the left arrow but nothing more is happening so it will stop as soon as there is no head or tail footage available but when there is head and tail footage 
you can roll to your heart's content. Now the other thing you can do is you can actually click here and drag to actually do a dynamic rolling edit or you can just click in the middle of the two and do exactly the same thing and if you want to trim each of the individual clips to different in point and different out point you can actually do that here again dynamically getting a ripple edit and you can actually type in figures here so if I select this and go plus 20 click you see it moves forwards 20 frames if I do minus 20 you see it goes back 20 frames you also have shuttle wheels which some people quite like so the middle one is a shuttle wheel for the rolling edit and then you've got a shuttle wheel for the ripple edits for each of the other two below here so this is quite an intense monitor it provides an awful lot of information tells you what the clips are you can shift the in points various different ways and actually do your rippling down here and then if you want to get to another one using keyboard shortcuts you simply do the up and down arrow so up and down arrow will take you to different clips along the timeline step by step by step so this is the old way of doing it it's not the present way of doing it but it's the older way of doing it and it's still a very powerful monitor the trim monitor but many people now want to do it directly in the timeline they don't want to bother with another monitor so if that's the case in the next tutorial we'll look at the new timeline trimming tools that you can do directly in the timeline without having to open a second monitor like this